Figma is an excellent tool for prototyping apps and testing those apps with stakeholders. You can very quickly build an app and figure out where all the buttons go and how your screens are gonna work and then can even hand it off to someone and have them scroll through, test and give you feedback. So there are a ton of tutorials out there that will show you where all the parts are on Figma and how they work. This tutorial is designed to get you up to speed very quickly in designing an app in Figma with best practices in mind, with, with good design in mind. So we're going to talk about Figma from a design perspective on what are the parts that need to come together in this thing really quickly. And then I'll also show you how Figma works. So first off, the most important place for you to start when designing an app is on paper or on some kind of drawing tool. I'm gonna use an iPad here. So switching over to my iPad, first come up with an idea for how your app is going to work and what it's gonna look like. So apps are pretty consistent though in some of their framework. So I'm gonna draw a few screens here for you. First off, remember apps are scrollable. So that means people can move down these things and can you can have long screens. So your screen is not gonna be the size of your phone. It's actually gonna be way longer. Um, zipping over here, there's some pretty consistent motifs that you can use for these apps and I'll show you one of them now. So let's say we have an opening screen and I've got some navigation buttons down here on the bottom. So my opening screen uh, for, let's say I'm designing for roller coasters, um, is going to have you know, my title right here in the middle and then maybe a few lines of text and then it will have a carrot that tells me to go down. And I'm gonna have a big image, a, a splash image there. And when I scroll a little bit further down, then I'll set my title and have some text down here and then probably an image. So this is a very basic layout for an app, but using this layout, I think we should, uh, you'll get up to speed pretty quickly in how this is gonna work. So switching back over to my app, so that's my opening screen, kind of my home, my home screen, and then an inside screen now. I wanna have a, um, I wanna have a small, kind of a small image up here up top and I need to get people directly into the content. So I have some titling there, some text, and um, maybe some, actually take that back. I'm gonna do uh, some kind of button. So I'm making it up here pretty fast on what this will look like to give you an idea of the main elements that go into an app design. So I got some buttons, I've got some images, some headers, some other things like that. One thing I need to make sure I don't forget is for most devices, they have a notch. And so this notch is gonna eat into my interface. So that means I need to put my battery and my time up here on either side. So it means I really haven't thought this through. This image is gonna to have to have some space above it. Also some navigation, I'll probably use a hamburger menu here in the top of this app so I can, uh, so I can navigate around. I don't know if I want to do that on the left or the right side now, but I'm just drawing it really quickly on that right side. Then uh, that means that my image is probably going to have to drop down. I don't know this. I'm probably going to need to do some kind of bar right here with uh, some kind of darkened bar. And then I'll start my image and my title or something like that. So this is super, super rough. I'm coming up with the different parts for my app. This is, again, rough enough that at least I'm working out my ideas before I get to Figma. So this is huge for you. Don't just jump in and start designing in Figma or designing in any software. Your drawing and your ideas on paper or on a screen like this are going to save you so much time for later work. So make sure you get to this drawing step first. Work out your ideas, get them all on paper or digital, and then move to the software. Okay, let's move on to Figma. Grab my <clears throat> iPad here and hop into our work. So I've got Figma open here. Make sure, there we go. 
Okay. So it, it wants to put that option into a search field. Um, make sure that we are cool. Um, so first off, I'm going to name my project roller coaster app because that's what I'm doing here. So here in Figma, I'm using the app. You can also use a web browser. My first step is to create a frame. So I've got a few things here, my layers and assets on this left side, on the right side, design, prototype, inspect. And then up in this bar up top is where all of my tools are, including frame. So frame is uh, a term that we'll use for the actual phone. I'm going to use an iPhone 13 for this one. So for my frame, I can do, I want a new frame, clicked on frame, and it gives me a bunch of options here. I'm going to do an iPhone 13 Pro. Once I tap that, it gives me a phone. So awesome. Set to spec all 390 pixels by 844 pixels of it. One thing you want to do first is set your guides um, to, to set some margins on the left and right side. You do not want your words running right up against those side of the window. So you need to set up some of those guides. So I can drag a guide in and I can set it, I'm going to set it about 20 pixels. Uh, actually, let's set it about 24 pixels. So I drag one guide in and I drag my next guide in to come in from 24 pixels. Let's see, that's 390 minus, oop, 390 minus 24 puts it at 366. So I can grab this guide and put it at 366. Cool, so now I've got guides set and they're both 24 pixels in. Setting guides first will allow you to create some constraints for your design that you will be so glad you sent them early. Now. You may need to change them later on, which is fine, but set them early and then adjust later on. But don't forget to start with those guides. Don't wing it. So um, hopping back to my picture in picture here. Um, over on the right side here, you'll see that when I've got one of these guides selected, it turns blue and otherwise it's red like that. So now let's create an object. Um, I can go to my box here. I have a lot of options, rectangles, lines, all of that. And looking at what I drew on my iPad, I want to do a big image that's gonna um, span this app. So I just tapped and it made a 100 by 100 image uh, or box. And then I'm gonna drag that one out. Um, when you have an object in Figma, you can set that using these uh, using these um, measurements over here on the left. So Y value, I can set it as 40 pixels off of the top. Um, I can set it 300, 390 pixels wide, which is the size on my screen. 208 pixels high, let's do 200 pixels. Um, actually, I want this to be the full screen because my first one is like a full screen thing. So I'm gonna drag that one there. I also want a bar at the bottom where my menuing is gonna go. So I'm gonna create another box. I'm gonna set that down here at the bottom and make it, drag it to be the full width. And I want that one to be about 40 pixels high. Yeah, let's do it 60 pixels high. Um, I'm basing these just based on what I know from, from web design. Um, so I've got that box about 60 pixels high. That's going to be my menu bar down here at the bottom. So notice over here on the right, my fill color is this gray color. I've got my box selected and the fill color is this gray. I can change that color very easily for my menu bar down at the bottom. I'm going to make that this gray. That's fine. I can also hide, um, that item by clicking on the eyeball. Uh, this little eye if I don't want to see it. You'll see that I've got this constrained. We'll talk more about that later, but I've got my dimensions. Um, I'm going to fake some little buttons that will go here. So I've got this circle. I'm going to make that circle a width of um, <clears throat> 30 pixels. See how it squished it? I want that to be a full circle. So here's what I can do. I did undo Command-Z. We'll undo on the Mac. 
I'm going to do constrain. See this locked right here, this little link. It means if I change one value, it's going to change the other value for my width and height. So I probably want that one to be about 24 pixels. Oh, that's pretty small. I'm going to zoom in here. That's pretty small for my icon. Uh, maybe 30, 34 pixels. See, again, it adjusted um, because it's constrained. Not bad, I like that sizing. And notice when I'm dragging it, it actually snaps to the center of my object. So now I know it's aligned straight in the center and I can bump it up against my guide. So I wanna do several of these. So I'm using option drag on the Mac that duplicates that. I'm just gonna make about five of them. Let's say I have five menu items down here at the bottom. So I've got these five menu items. If you wanna select them all, hold down shift and click them to select them one by one. So now they are all selected and notice I can change the color on them to be a light color to simulate what buttons would be down there. <clears throat> now I wanna align these and actually space them perfectly. I can align them to their centers and then I can also distribute spacing. I can distribute horizontal spacing and now they are all perfectly spaced equally all the way across. Super cool, Figma is so easy to use in aligning these objects and making sure they are all spaced properly. So I've got some simulated menu items. What if I want my screen to be longer? So I can select my frame and I'll tell you, it's best to name your frame as early as possible so you can keep track. This is gonna be my home screen. When I click on layers on this left side, you'll see home is the name of my frame and then I've got all these items. These ellipses, if I click on them, they show up and they light up in my design. These are all my menu items and I can rename them whatever I want, home button or whatever. My rectangle two and my rectangle one, which this one is my hero image. So if I want this frame to be longer, if I select the frame, I can grab the bottom of the frame and make it longer, which is where my other content will be. And then I've got my menu right here set at um, about where I'd want it to be on the screen. Okay, so I wanna stick an image in this box. <clears throat> so off here in the back, I've pulled up some images already, some roller coaster images for my roller coaster app. I'm gonna drag an image into my space on top of this box, and it will drop an image right into it. So it expanded my box, um, though. It, it expanded my, my, my um, rectangle all the way pretty long. I can drag that rectangle in to get that image to sit inside. And I can double tap to, um, or double click to bring my image down. Make sure you don't squish these images. See, it's like adjusting my image so it doesn't get squished. Yeah, you don't want any squished images with some weird dimensions, but I can bring that image down and I can crop it to fit just inside and I can slide it inside that image box. So now I've got a nice image set inside there. Let's talk about image options. So if I tap on this image, double tap on it, I get an image option off here to the right where I can actually reduce its contrast. I can deal with some of the saturation of the image and I can do some really nice adjustments. I can make it dark so, it, so some type will sit on top of it. Really nice there. So you can make some nice adjustments to those images. Let's go ahead and put a title on top of it. This is where I'm gonna use my text tool. So I might set my text tool, Roller Coaster Mania. Yep, that's the name of my app. So I've got my type set and you'll see over here, hero image, rectangle, Roller Coaster Mania. There's my text and it is on top. If I take this text layer and I drag it down below my image, it'll disappear because now it is behind that image. If I drag it up on top, it will come back. Let's talk about type in Figma. So I can adjust this type over here in my menu on the right side and I can change the typeface 
to um, a range of typefaces. I do wish it would preview the typefaces for us, but unfortunately it doesn't. So I'm having to guess what they look like. I can set my weight. I can make that bold. I can change its type size to pretty large. I can do all kinds of things. I can center it as well. So I can drag that type box, that type and see, I get a guide that pops up when it's right in the center. Awesome. So now that it's in the center, I can increase its type size and I can do other adjustments. Um, you can also draw in Figma. Um, I've had an okay time drawing on it. It's not my favorite to draw in, but I'm going to draw like a quick kind of arrow here. So I use the pen tool and made a point. I held down the shift key. So I did a 90 degree or a 45 degree constraint. And then I made another one and you'll notice like, let me redraw that. Here's my first point. Here's my second point. I'm holding down shift to go 90 degrees or, or 45 degrees. And then for my last point, I'm holding down that shift key and you'll see it gives me a hint. Ah, these points are aligned. So now I know they're perfect all the way across. I'll go back to my select tool because I want to change the color of this line. I need it to be white. So I've got this object here. Now I've selected as an object. I can change its color to white. And I can even change the thickness of my stroke. Um, I can have that stroke be the center, inside, outside. I can do all kinds of adjustments here. I can even put some ends on it to tell it I want rounded ends on my, um, on my object here. So now I've got that nice and set and I can increase its thickness to make it really thick. That works. And I'll drag it toward the center. So that's the line tool and how you can design some of those. And again, vector one, um, I can name it so I can keep track of it. So now I've got that that kind of tells me uh, there's more down there. Do a really basic design here. Um, now, if I want to set some more type, what's below it, um, I can do another one. Um, cool rides. I'm going to set that as my left aligned, um, bump it up against my margin, use those margins. It will create some really nice, um, create some nice uh, um, alignments that will make your design look cohesive when you use those. Um, now I'm going to set some body copy or some helper text here. This is going to be kind of a tag. Uh, I'm going to say that it's a tag I want to use. Uh, choose my typeface here. Let's pick just Helvetica. That's fine. So I'm going to grab this. Keep missing it. There we go grab it here. I want this text to flow. So I've got this text box and see I can adjust the text box and make the text flow. And then I can reduce its size because this, this type is going to be uh, kind of my, my subhead here, my, my tagline. And I'm just using some generated text from my favorite text generators called Riker Ipsum. These are quotes from Commander Riker from Star Trek. So I'm going to set that in there. I can change my type color um, if I want to. Um, uh, let's make it roller coaster orange. Cool. And now I want to set some body copy. So I've got some body copy that um, I've already built. I'm going to copy that over here. I'm going to get my text tool. I'm going to make a text box. So I'm going to click and drag to set that text and paste all my text in. Now I want this to be light and I want to take its type size down to about 14. One thing to remember, um, make sure your type has enough letting. So I'm using letting here. That's the space between the lines. So it is more legible. I've got it 14 point over 21. Don't make your type so small that it is difficult to read. The people are going to view this, view this on a device. It needs to be the right size so they can view it and not have to squint or get frustrated. So I set some text in there. <clears throat> 
And let's make a button. I'll show you how to make a button. So I've got my rectangle here. I'm gonna create a button down here at the bottom. Uh, I want that to be 46 pixels tall. So button language is rounded corners. So I'm gonna zoom in here to show you. I want to round these corners. So see my rounded corner option here? I can make that as like a six pixel rounded corner. And now uh, my button's starting to take shape. I want it to be that same orange I chose up top. I like that orange, that's a really good one. So what I can do is I can select my color and use my eyedropper. When I take my eyedropper, it allows me to go right on top of that orange and it now will make my button that orange. So now I've got a cohesive design that's bringing the same colors together over and over again. So let me set some text on top of that. Um, ride now, sure. And I'm gonna have that all caps, I'm gonna have it bold, and I'm gonna grab that and center it in my button. Okay, so now I've got my button set right there with my text. You can click and drag to grab the whole thing. I'm using my keyboard arrows to pull it up to put it into place. Okay, so what we've done is we've done some images, uh, we've set some shapes, we've set some text, we've set a button, all using the shape tools as well, and you have line tools, you know, right? So we've used that, you can use polygons, we've used those tools. We've used our type tool. We've also used the pen tool to create a shape. We've used the frame tool to create a frame, as well as our move tools for selecting those items and moving them around. Those are going to be the main tools for you to use. You can always use the hand tool for moving around. I'm using a track pad, so I can also move that around using my fingers too. We've also used the layers palette here to be able to find our objects and order them the way we want to order them. You can group these objects into different groupings and do other adjustments. We won't get into that in this tutorial, but that at least shows you all of those items and how they are arranged. On the right side, we've done some, um, um, uh, some alignment in aligning items to our left, right, and distrib uh, distribution. We've used the pixel perfect adjustments for the numbers. And then also we've done some of the color adjustments as well as image um, filters or fill styles. Anytime you see these dots in the corners, you can drag them to bring in rounded corners. I don't need that for my design, but you can do that. Okay, so let's get into prototype. So prototyping is where we will make links between our items and making connections. We're going to use that in a second, but let's check out our design by pressing that um, arrow, that kind of triangle, to see it in action. So you'll see right here, my design's not looking too bad. I like that menu item right here, but I want it to be locked down. Okay, I need to fix that. So I'm going to zoom into my menu here and I can select those items and I can do fixed position when scrolling. So now these items are going to be fixed and see they have now become on the left side under the fixed item and then the scrolled items are below it. So whatever is below it, it's going to scroll when I drag and whatever is in fixed is going to stay. Let's see how that works. I'm going over here to my present mode. It's going to render my design for me. Now I see that notch. And now when I drag up, my menu's staying there. Not bad. It needs to go lower. It actually needs to be at the bottom of the phone. I should have set it to the right level. But um, not bad. That's pretty cool. So I actually want to make this app go somewhere, which means I need to make another screen. The best way to work with these screens, now that I've done all my guides and I've done all my hard work, is just to duplicate it. So I'm gonna hold down Option and drag my, drag my, my frame to make another frame. So for this frame, I don't need Roller Coaster Mania on this one. This is gonna be a sub page. Um, but I am gonna grab, based on my drawing, I, I have this kind of high menu item, this high, um, high image, kind of skinny image. I want to set that 
up here and I'm gonna drag a different image into this one. So I'm dragging an image from my desktop on top of the box. And I got all expanded there. But I can take that box and I can bring it down. Much smaller. Oop, that image didn't go inside the box. Let's try it again. Here. I'm going to drag it under the frame and then I'm going to paste it into. Uh, I am new enough at Figma, so now I'm. Okay, so now now you caught me. Um, I want to paste this into the object. Oh, I see what's happening. I see what's happening. Okay, so thanks for bearing with me here. I'm going to create an object, create my shape, grab my image, copy, and then I can, I should be able to paste into. Okay, so now it's falling apart, right? So now my lack of, of Figma knowledge is creating a problem. Um, I used, okay, so I will have to look up how to do this. If you know how to do this, you're probably laughing at me. You're like, Psh, Dennis, we know how to do this and you are floundering all over the place. So I'll do the old, I'll let you figure that one out. Um, I will drag it in here. Um, you can tell that I have not used Figma for very long, uh, but at least this will be good enough to get you started. I've got my image in here. There is a way to do a cropped image inside a box and it's not working the way I expected it from last time. Okay. But this will be good enough for our try. Um, Coaster Focus. Okay, so I named this frame Coaster Focus. Notice here on the left side, Coaster Focus and Home. So I've got, it It tells me where my frames are um, so I can keep track of where they are going. So um, I'm going to take this cool, rev, cool Rides in text, hold down Shift and drag it up. And for this one... Um, Let's call it Fire Coaster. And I'm gonna have Fire Coaster, I want that text to be on top of that box and I wanna make it white. Oh no, where did it go? I just need to drag it up to put it on top of the image. So now Fire Coaster. I'll just drag whatever that text was there. And let's say this is the Fire Coaster page and I don't need that button for this page. So. For this screen, um, it's kind of a focus on the fire coaster. Let's preview that one. So coaster focus screen, I'm gonna hit present. And now that I have multiple screens, it shows me the fire coaster. I can also toggle back and forth um, and see both of my screens if I use this um, view at the bottom, because I'll restart. <clears throat> okay, pretty good. Now let's link something. This is the last step for uh, this quick, quick tutorial on um, Figma. So I've got my Ride Now button right here. I'm gonna group these items, uh, Command G, uh, uh, to make them grouped on the Mac, it's Command G. And you'll see here that this group is called Ride Now button, cool. You can turn this button into a component, which will allow you to reuse it over and over and over again and make one change and change your whole app. I won't go into components, but you should learn about them. They will save you a ton of time. So now I've got this item called Ride Now. I'm going to slip over here to Prototype. So prototype, once I go into prototype mode, now I've got this dot that appears on this object and any object that I click on will have that dot. This is how I can tell uh, this button to go to another frame. 
So I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna point it and make it snap to this second frame. It gives me a few options. So on tap, navigate to, coaster focus. And then the animation, I can make it do whatever I want. Move in, move out, slide, dissolve. I'm just gonna make it do instant. Cool, so here in prototyping, this button will zip over here to fire coaster. Let's check that out. So once I go to my present mode, I've got my app, I can scroll down, and if I tap on right now, it goes to fire coaster. I can't go anywhere because these buttons don't go anywhere right now, I'm kind of stuck, it's a dead end, but at least you see how I can make one object on my design go to somewhere else. Okay, so that is a very quick view of Figma. Um, how to build a page or two using best practices, using guides, um, setting images, making sure you name your frames. Also, how all of the tools work uh, for creating all the objects in your design. And then how to do some prototyping, how to tap on something and make it go somewhere else. You also got a good view of me floundering, trying to figure something out that wasn't behaving the way I expected. So that's a bonus. I hope this helps you get started in Figma. It's a really easy software as long as you keep all the parts organized, name your frames, use those guides, and work methodically as you design these prototypes. Um, you will get up and running in no time. Thanks for watching me flounder and also um, have fun playing with Figma. Um, just based on these basics that I showed you, you can build some amazing things. So go out there, play with it, and see what you can do.